Hello there and welcome back to the Chaps Guide. My name is Ash and I am your host on this journey through men's style, self-development and personal grooming. Now we haven't done a video on shoes for a little while on the channel so I thought I would remedy that today and I'd like to talk to you about probably, certainly, my favourite type of shoe for men, the brogue. Now, shoes are such a fundamental part of every man's outfit that I think it's manifestly important that we all, those of us who intend to be intentionally well-dressed men, we focus on our shoes because, you know, it is absolutely one of the key elements by which anybody will judge you when they first meet you. You know, people will draw their first impression on the clothing that you wear. They will look you up and down. And, you know, quite often that starts from the ground up and they will make a snap judgment based on what's at the bottom of your trousers. So really worth taking some time and thinking about it. Now, today I'm gonna to talk about the brogue and the various different types of brogue and some of my views on how you can employ brogues in your clothing ensemble as you go through life. But as ever, I often like to look back in the history of an item to understand where it began, where it entered into the men's style story. And with brogues, it goes back quite some way. Now, it can trace its history back to Scottish and Irish ancestry, Gaelic ancestry, where the brogue was originally quite a fundamental piece of footwear, often made of untanned deer hide. And it got the word, well, in Gaelic, it's referred to as brog, which we believe originates from a the Gaelic word for a leg covering, or possibly the awl. Now, the awl is, of course, a tool which would be used to fashion the holes, which are so characteristic of the brogue shoe. So it absolutely makes sense that that's where the brogue shoe gets its historical background. And it would have been a working shoe. The reason for the broguing, and of course, you know, for, for the uninitiated, the broguing are the small holes that we see decorating modern shoes. But in their earliest iteration, those holes would have been placed within the footwear to allow for the escape of water. Because you would have been wearing your brogues, your, your shoes, uh, out in the fields working. Perhaps uh, working the land or perhaps cutting peat. And these are very sodden, wet areas. Your shoe would have got soaking wet. It would have filled with water. And the broguing would have allowed an egress point for you know the, that water to escape the shoe so that you're not standing in a shoe full of water all day. So it originates from quite a practical uh, beginning but actually today it's developed as is often the case into quite a stylish item which uh, we all consider employing into our daily wear. Now originally the brogue was considered to be quite an informal shoe. It would have been considered a working shoe or a country shoe where gentlemen would have, you know, in, in the working day when they're in the city, perhaps in London or whatever, they would have worn their sleek black leather cap to Oxfords and things like that. And then when they went on the weekend to their country estate, they would have transitioned into their brogues. Uh, and you know, it would have been a country shoe, but today, as I say, we have evolved, style constantly evolved. And you know, today the brogue is absolutely acceptable in any walk of life. It's not considered an informal shoe. Uh, it's considered a shoe which you can wear with business wear uh, in all but the most formal of situations. And you know, if you look at uh, some of the more famous wearers of brogues, even Tony Blair, former British Prime Minister, famously wore his lucky church brogues to every Prime Minister's question time on Wednesdays in Parliament. They became his lucky talisman. So certainly the brogue is, a, is an item of footwear that you can comfortably wear in practically any situation in the modern era. So let's look at some of the brogues which you're most likely to see. And typically they'll come in one of three styles. And let's take this one here. Now this is what we would refer to as the full brogue. Now just to clarify, what is the broguing? Well, the broguing are the series of holes which are punched in typically the front of the shoe, the medallion, uh, but also uh, to in decoration around the outside of the shoe. Now this is a full brogue. You'll often also hear them refer 
referred to as the wingtip because it describes the shape of the broguing around the front of the shoe. There's different types. This is actually a, a long brogue, which means that the, um, the broguing extends around the full extent of the shoe and it really, uh, I think, adds a lot of texture, a lot of pattern and interest to the footwear. This is one of the reasons why when I look through my shoe collection, I find that brogues are absolutely the most common shoe which I own. Um, and I think, you know, they just lend some character to your footwear. But the full brogue, there's a lot of broguing on there. So the broguing, those holes which have been punched through, really, as I say, bring a pop to your footwear. And that, that would be our full brogue. Now this is actually a Derby style shoe. Never get confused by the terminology of the shoes. You'll hear shoes referred to as Oxfords and Derbys. This merely refers to the lacing system, doesn't refer to the decoration on the shoe at all. This is a Derby, which means that the laces are uh, on top of the leather. And I have a Oxford brogue here uh, in black, which has uh, a, a very different lacing system which is enclosed and I think you'll agree you know a black brogue nicely shined as this one is really can be worn with any form of business attire whatsoever but ideally suited you know for the city and any other situation where you just want to you know you want to be that person with the best shoes in the room and actually this pair I've had for 20 years uh, lasting fantastically uh, made by look actually so you know it just goes to show those those brogues i wear that shoe in some of the most fundamental moments of my life i remember those shoes vividly uh, and they've really done a great job for me now other than the full brogue of course there are other options available and here we have a semi brogue um, this is a shoe by grenson in black uh, and i think the semi brogue if you're not comfortable with a lot of broguing, a lot of decoration on your shoe. The semi brogue is your halfway house, and you know, often referred to as a half brogue as well, and for good reason. Because here we see that the broguing is limited to the toe cap of the shoe, so it's like a black cap toe Oxford, but there's been additional decoration in broguing having been applied to the shoe to give it more interest. Now, the semi brogue was introduced by John Lobb, one of the world's most famous shoemakers in around about 1937. And it would have been the beginning of the deformalization of perhaps things like black cap to Oxfords. And in this case, the broguing is on the medallion and across the toe cap. And there's some additional broguing uh, around the extent of the shoe, around the flanks and the heel, again, giving visual interest, making this shoe, I think, for me personally, more interesting and more enjoyable to wear than that simple black cap toe Oxford, because there is character. And that is such a fundamentally important thing in your shoes. It's a reflection of the person that you are. Now, the third type of brogue that you're most commonly likely to encounter is the quarter brogue. And I have one here in uh, a nice color brown. This is a loke uh, quarter brogue. And the quarter brogue refers to this single line of perforations which just cross the toe cap. So again, it's like a cap toe um, Oxford shoe, but with the slightest bit of broguing across the toe cap. And of course, this would be considered the most formal of the brogues which we're likely to encounter because just a little bit of broguing. And this is one which I often wear in my most formal situations. Um, recently, when I attended Windsor Castle for a investiture uh, with the royal family, I wore a black version of this pair of shoes. Now, Formality would have dictated the most formal type of shoe, the black cap to Oxford. But I just preferred the look of the quarter brogue. It fitted me and my style a little bit better. So that's what I went for. So never feel, you know, hogtied by formality. Choose what you think suits your personality and your personal style best. And I think the quarter brogue is that lovely little toe in the water if you're not comfortable with the various types of uh, heavier broguing which you'll often see on other shoes. Now there are many variations that you're likely to find of these type of shoes made in different materials and incorporating different you know functional things. You'll find the austerity brogue this is a term often used that's just a shoe which looks like a brogue but doesn't have the actual perforations uh, and another very common well I shouldn't say common another very 
flamboyant type of brogue is the spectator brogue or in the UK we tend to refer to them as the co-respondent brogue and this is where uh, the different elements of the shoe are made in different colours. A little bit you know as I say flamboyant and only good for certain types of occasions but if you've got that sort of personality and character by all means employ it in your daily wear. Now on the table here I have some variations of brogues which I've collected over the years which tend to work for me rather well uh, and I've even got just to my side uh, a brogue boot because I often wear brogue dress boots because again I think there's just that little bit more character and personality in the broguing. This is a full brogue uh, dress boot by Loke and I've had this for a number of years and I absolutely adore them. They just look so much full of you know strength of character and purpose when you wear these it works a treat. For more formal occasions um, you know I actually have quite an interesting brogue here. This is uh, a full brogue uh, and a very stylish one made by Grenson and as you can see there are different types of leather employed. So you've got a lattice work leather forming the centre part of the vamp of the shoe uh, and that front part of the wingtip uh, is sheer leather so nice shiny leather and you know it's not good for perhaps the most formal of occasions but again there's certainly some character here and the lovely burgundy colour makes it something which looks great when you know I'm wearing perhaps grey flannel slacks and a blazer as I am today. It just makes your clothing pop. It draws the eye and it makes a remarkable first impression about your style. Um, again for the summer months I often like to wear a suede brogue and this is a pair of shoes. I worked it out the other day. I have owned these for over 30 years. Uh, I purchased them in Germany when I was based over there in the military and leather soles and they've had a heck of a life I have to say but they're still going strong. And this is a classic example of how I have attempted to make the shoe more interesting by adding a different colour pair of laces. It works a treat and uh, yeah these are a lovely pair of shoes still going strong but the broguing with that suede material brings the shoe to life in a remarkable way. So if you're sitting there thinking you know brogues are not for me I'm too classically stylish I only ever wear uh, you know um, cap to oxfords or hole cut shoes or other variations of those. Please think again, the brogue is a shoe which can really bring a lot to your wardrobe. Now my own journey with brogue started when I was a tiny kid. I imagine, I guess, that the brogue might have been the first formal shoe that I ever owned because my mother when she dressed me for school I always had little Clark's brand brogue shoes and I wore them right through my entire school period uh, and for a little while it put me off brogues but as time went on I came to love them again uh, and the brogue is a shoe which is perfect in the modern era because we live in an era which is perhaps less formal than ever before and bringing the brogue into your clothing is something which allows it to to straddle the different tiers of formality. As I say in formal dress you know a quarter brogue in a black or a standard colour, perfect. It can really work well for you. Uh, in the summer months, in a different material, the brogue brings visual interest to what could be quite austere clothing. If you're just wearing, you know, chinos and a shirt, the brogue brings a little pop of interest. Uh, if you are somebody who likes to wear less formal clothing, maybe even denim jeans or chinos, a brown brogue, again, brings character to your clothing which is difficult to achieve in any other way and if you want to go something a little bit more stylish um, you can incorporate different types of leather, uh, different colours of leather like the spectator or as I have here different styles of leather included within the same, same shoe. It certainly speaks volumes for your style so don't think that you know brogues are things again only worn in the country. You can wear them in any situation it just takes your imagination and the right pair of shoes and it elevates your style to the next level. So where would you source your shoes from? Well all of the manufacturers carry brogues in their collection. They wouldn't be able to exist if they didn't. This is one of the most popular types of shoe and they'll all generally have a full brogue, they will have a semi brogue and a quarter brogue for you to choose from in a variety of colours. 
Some of the better brands, which I personally would favour, well, you know, here on the table, actually, I've got a Loke Birkdale pair of brogues. These are one of my favourite shoes. I've got them in black and in brown. And at £285, still available in the, in the Loke catalogue today, you won't go far wrong. Then, if you want to look a little bit more stylish, a little bit more expensive, then you can choose to go down the route of Cheney, classic Northamptonshire manufacturer. Cheney make a beautiful brogue uh, in called the Arthur 3. At £380, it's a classic British shoe, which I don't think you can go wrong with. Pick a nice colour, a nice ox blood, and it's a shoe that will last you for decades and look wonderful in so doing. Um, then you can look at maybe even a slight te a tier higher, Crockett and Jones, a bit more expensive. Um, you can buy their Pembroke. It's a Derby shoe, and at £440, I think it represents a pretty good entry level to a very high level of men's shoemaking and a quality shoe, again, that's going to be in your collection for decades and decades. If you're in North America and you want to buy locally, Allen Edmonds, of course, make their McAllister uh, shoe. Again, around about priced at uh, £347 if you were to buy it from the UK. Converted to American, it's going to be slightly different, but the McAllister is a classic solid looking brogue, which I actually find very attractive. Never owned a pair of Allen Edmonds, uh, don't travel to America that often these days, but a very good shoe if you're in that continent. And if you're in Central Europe and you want to represent or support shoemaking there, Carmina from Spain, of course. Their Detroit is a derby laced shoe, costs around about £357, but again, a classic last, looks wonderful, and you know, it's gonna it's gonna do the job for you. And if you want to go, you know, full tonto, as they say, you can go to Gaziano and Girling and invest in their Rothschild shoe, which I think beautiful broke in an oxblood colour. I really love it, although it's going to be up in the £1,000 or so mark, so it's definitely in the premier elite uh, shoe world. And then, you know, if money's no object, you can go into the bespoke world with, you know, the George Cleverley and the, and the John Lobbs, and you can get anything you like. But uh, I think you'll agree, the Brogue is definitely a shoe worth having in your collection. As you can see, it's the most common shoe in mine, and uh, yeah, I love wearing them in the various different colours and materials, and I'll continue to do so long into the future. So, I hope you've enjoyed this gallop through the history and my observations of the Brogue shoe. If you have, I would encourage you to give this video a thumbs up. If you're not already a subscriber, click that red button, come on the journey with us. If you wish to practically support the channel, you can buy me a coffee. You'll find a link to the Buy Me A Coffee page in the show notes below. So, until the next time we meet, enjoy wearing your brogues with style and panache. And I look forward to seeing you again very soon.